With OpenAI's big release of GPT-4 Omni, they also announced the API would be available. This new version is being advertised as being twice as fast as GPT-4 Turbo at half the cost. And it comes with improved vision capabilities built right into the model. In this video, we'll put the GPT-4 O API to the test by seeing how well it can extract text from an image file. And we'll be using invoice as an example. And we'll even throw in some handwritten ones. And I'll also share some lesser known techniques to ensure you get a consistent data format every single time. We're gonna build this in Python. So we can just start with a blank file. It's called invoice extract.py. And the first part of the code is just importing the libraries. And the only non-default one actually they have to install is the OpenAI one. So we start off by creating a new client from the OpenAI library. And by default, this just looks for an environment variable on your local system. There's instructions in the readme how to get that set up for the first time. So there's two ways you can use the AI vision on an image. You can either point it to an internet URL or you can upload a local file and have it process that. So we'll start with the easy one, which is just a link to an image on the internet. The next part of the code this is where it starts to get interesting, is we're gonna load in an invoice schema. This is the format we wanna see return to us. So let me open that up. And if we see in here, it's just a simple format for an invoice. So it has things like date issued, due date, who is from, who it's to. If you go down here, you have the total. And then we also have required properties. These are, these are fields that must be on the invoice for to create this schema. And the idea is that we can keep it consistent over multiple different types of invoices. They all should have this data on it at least the required data, and then everything will be named the same so we can use it to process later on. So going back to our code, here's what you put in the model. Now you can just put in GPT-40, and this actually just goes and finds the latest version of that model. And the nice thing is you don't have to put in a separate division model anymore. You just put in this and it works for everything you need. The next one's a nice little tip. If you put in response format equals JSON object, that's gonna tell it to just return JSON back. Don't return other text or markup just return JSON, which is a very nice feature as you'll see later on. From there, you just fill out the, the chat completion. So what you wanna do is in the content, we're gonna tell it what we want. So we're gonna say, provide JSON file that represents this document and use this JSON schema. I didn't even have to really tell it it's an invoice we're expecting in this case. This is just generic, you use it for all kinds of different images. The idea here is we're passing that schema that I just showed you, and then it's gonna know from that schema what kind of document it's looking for. Then next, you have to put in, under type, you have to put an image underscore URL, so this tells that it's a URL and not a file we're uploading. And then you just pass it the URL of the image. Put in a max tokens here. I put 500 in, that should be adequate for what I'm trying to do. That'll depend a lot on what you're doing with it. Okay, so now, so now we've done that. We sent it to OpenAI. We've got GPT-4.0 analyzing the image and returning back a JSON file. So now what do we do with it? I have this code here that's commented out. Before you used to have to parse and find the JSON object inside the response. We don't have to do that anymore with that with that flag I just showed you about returning JSON. Now we can just assume it's JSON coming back. So we just set our JSON data variable and grab it from the response, choice, first choice, message.content. So now I just figured out what the file name is from the original image. And I use that to create my JSON file. So I use the same base file name and then put a JSON extension on it and then just save it to a file. And that way you can kind of link up. You have your image file and your JSON file and they have the same name, different extension. So that's really easy to use. And it's cheap. I did some testing and it's true that it is about half the price of the old vision model. And by the way, I'll put a GitHub link to all the starter code in the description of this video. So you can check that out for yourself. So let's try the model with something a bit harder. Let's try some handwriting. And we'll even try it on this yellow paper to make it harder to detect the characters. But as I've seen in a second, I ran into a bit of a problem with this. The solution involved uploading a local image to GPT-40. So I'll show you how to do that as well. So what I tried first was just putting in the URL for that handwritten invoice. But I got a weird error message back saying it wasn't a JPEG file or wasn't a supported image file, even though it is a JPEG, which should be supported. And then so I tried it again the next day and it actually worked fine. So I think it was just a temporary bug in OpenAI. But nonetheless, I used it an opportunity to try to process it another way. So if you look at the new file I created for handling local files, the key difference is you have to base64 encode the file before you upload it to OpenAI and GPT-40. You have to import the base64 library and then you just say base64, b64 encode. And, they want, and then the other difference is in the image URL, you have to tell it that it's a base64 image. You have to tell it the image format. Although I'm not sure how important this is because actually this is a PNG now that I'm loading in there and I, I said JPEG and it still worked fine. So I think the important part is just putting base64 here and then converting your image to base64 and passing it in. Okay, so if you just run that, you're gonna say it's gonna create the file handwritten sample.json. This is kind of what I mean about a pairing. So now you have the PNG file and the JSON file. So this is the data extracted from the file. So if you have a look at that, 
again, I'm actually very impressed with the results here. And again, it used the right schema, like the right format for this invoice that we wanted. So everything's great there. And one thing I noticed that I was really impressed with, but it wasn't consistent, is this time when I ran it, it put the date as 0221. If we look at the original image, you see it's got 21 there, so it read that correctly and it disregarded the scratched out 18, which is super impressive this time. But I did run it other times, and I noticed sometimes it wouldn't get the 21 right, but it usually got everything else correct. So that cheap price, as well as that quality and how well it extracts the data, it's really a game changer for doing OCR. No longer will you go back to the old way of doing, you know, where you have to define zones and tell it what size paper you're using. All that stuff has been made irrelevant by this. But one hesitation, especially from big companies and governments, is they don't want to send data to OpenAI or, or to another cloud provider. Breakthrough I see coming soon is when Llama open sources its multimodal model. That works well, which I think it will. I'm gonna be doing lots of videos when that comes out, so make sure you subscribe to see those. But now customers can take that model into their own network, and they don't have to worry about exposing customers' data to one of these models. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.